today, I'd like you to be able to identify two differences between emergent writing, scribble, and early conventional writing, which is writing that we can recognize. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, different ways that kids might be able to write, and so I'd like you to be able to identify two different principles about using these alternative pencils, altern alternative ways for kids to write, and then I'd like you to be able to identify the different ways that students can create writing. Okay, I always love to start out with what kids without disabilities are doing and look at the role of writing for these kids. So on the left, you can see this little toddler there in the upper left-hand corner, the student's scribbling. Someone's giving them a crayon and they're just going to town making marks on the page. Below that, you can see on the pink writing sample, the student's just making wavy lines. And below that, you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, students are starting to make letter-like looking forms. So all along the left side, these are examples of emergent writing. These are for kids who are just getting started, uh, who have no idea what they're doing. When you give them a crayon, they don't know what it is. Uh, they don't know what to do with it. They don't know what writing is for. They might eat the crayon. They might throw it. They might rip the paper. Uh, they're just exploring and experimenting. And they're going to have lots, they're going to have hundreds of hours to experiment and scribble. And all that writing time helps prepare them to become early conventional writers, which is the writing sample that you see on the right. So you can see on the right, that spells something. That's something we can read. That says, I like starfishes because they are pretty. So there's no more scribble there, clearly, right? We can read that. And so, again, the point of showing this is that emer writing begins as emergent writing when kids are really, really, really young, which are the writing samples on the left. As kids develop more knowledge about writing through those experiences, eventually their writing evolves into early conventional writing, which is the example that you see on the right. And so the important point to take home for our students is that emergent writing is where it starts, and many of our students have never written before, so they may, may be emergent writers. The important point to, to, again, to share is that kids without disabilities get a couple years uh, of emergent writing before they're expected to spell anything that looks correct. Okay, so there's just some examples of what the role of writing in, in uh, typical development. Oh, and I added one more thing. Uh, and so you can see in some of the writing samples what kids know about print. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit, but we can use this emergent writing as assessment information. So writing for our guys, this is like no news for any of us, right? Writing is a huge challenge, a huge problem for kids with significant disabilities, including deaf blindness. There's little known about writing for this population because usually it's not addressed uh, because it's so physically hard, right? Our kids can't hold a pencil no matter how well it's adapted and no matter how much handwriting instruction they've had. Writing with their hand is just not going to be a functional way to produce print in a way that it's useful for them, where they can learn something from it. So it's physically hard, but there's lots of solutions out there that we need to really try and dig in with. There's lots of assistive technology, uh, high tech and light tech that can be tried. So the teams really need to work together to kind of figure this out. Uh, the other reason why kids may not be able to write as much is because usually the focus tends to be on reading. And it's actually that way in general education. Uh, the other reason why our kids may not get access to, to writing is because there may be some erroneous beliefs that students need to be ready to write. Well, we know that's absolutely not true. Think about the picture you just looked at with the toddler holding a crayon. That student, that child didn't have to demonstrate any readiness skills. Uh, the adult, as adults, we automatically give little kids crayons right away with the expectation that, you know, they're going to learn about writing by writing. We're not going to wait for them to know what to do with a crayon, right? We want, to, want them to learn by using a crayon. So the bottom line is we want, them, we want to give them the tool that we want them to learn how to use. So they're learning by doing. So there's no readiness here. Nobody's got to be ready. Actually, we're the ones that need to be ready. We need to have the right tools available for that. So once again, our guys don't need to be ready. Uh, so Here's some really, these are, I'm going to do some commercials now for writing and why I think it's so important. Uh, writing, challenges students to, writing challenges students to think about print. So if you look at the writing sample on the left that was made with a, by a student without disabilities, you can see that this student's really, you know, grappling with how the pencil works, trying to learn how to form letters. And she's actually forming some letters in there that we can read. 
uh, but, there are, but there are other ones that we can't read. They're letter-like forms. They're kind of there, but not really. But you can see that through the active manipulation of using a pencil, she's figuring out what works and what doesn't work. And so she's trying to problem solve. And the way that she learns how to make these letters is by making all these you know, errors and just trial, you know, trial and error with a pencil. So because she's actively doing it, she's you know, trying to figure out how to do it moment by moment. So the active construction, the active nature of this really helps them learn. And so you can see on the right-hand side in the photo, that's a, a photo of Jake and his supermom Elaine. Now Jake has deaf blindness. He's profoundly deaf and legally blind. And he's got pretty tough cerebral palsy and he can't hold a pencil with his hand. So for him, writing will be using a big switch. So he has a button on top of his left arm. It's a switch and it's connected to the computer in front of him. And you look at the computer and you can see that there's an on-screen alphabet. All the, all, all the rows, all the alphabet is present. And so he's using the button to move through those letters to choose one. And so that's scribbling for him. But what's nice about it is he's actively, physically engaged in it. And that helps him really figure out how it works. So writing challenges students to think about print. They're actively engaged. And we know that when kids are actively engaged in something, learning is more efficient. Here's another reason to write. Writing is a window in on students' understandings of print. So that means that writing is assessment data. Uh, so if you look at, you know, on top, there, there's that writing sample from the student without disabilities. Uh, and you can see in the pink writing sample that student knows a lot about writing. First of all, she knows that writing goes from left to right. And right, she's got her writing represented in wavy lines, so she's kind of getting the idea of what letters look like. She's also getting the idea of what a word is, right? Because you can see little spaces between her groups of squiggles. She's also getting the idea that writing is made in rows and goes from top to bottom. That's a lot, right? And she couldn't tell us those things, right? She, but we can see it in her writing. So that's really a good assessment data. Uh, so on the bottom, you see Matthew's journal writing. Now Matthew also has deaf blindness. And uh, he uses an enlarged keyboard to write with because he can't hold a pencil well. So with Matthew's writing, we can see quite a bit. Again, he's an emergent writer. Uh, and we can see that he's getting the sense of word here. He's got the concept of word coming in. And we can see that he's making word groups here. And he's understanding how to use spaces. Now, this doesn't spell anything yet, but he's kind of moving along, right? He's, he's not doing random scribble. But he is moving into, he's showing us that he understands concept of web a word, which is a lot more sophisticated. So Matthew couldn't tell us this. Uh, he's nonverbal, uh, but we can, again, get this through her, his writing. So writing is really good assessment data. It's also concrete. It's not going anywhere. So clearly, you know, since our guys can't hold a pencil, um, assistive technology is going to be a really critical component here, really critical. And so uh, whether it's light tech or high tech, we need to figure out what tool is going to work best for our students. So, you know, in terms of light tech writing tools, it could be something like an eye gaze keyboard. It could be an adapted paper keyboard. Uh, for some st other students, they might want to want to be using the computer. Uh, they make enlarged keyboards. We'll look at a, a picture in a couple minutes. Uh, they might also be using switches and a computer switch interface like you saw with Jake. Because Jake has tough cerebral palsy, so he can't point to an enlarged, compute, uh, an enlarged keyboard. So instead, he uses switches on his computer. There's also specialized software out there that you can use to make writing activities. Uh, there's software that you know, allows um, whatever the student types in to be spoken back. Uh, there's nice software where you can make word banks in them and make custom activities for certain uh, books that you're, that you're working on. So anyway, uh, there's some tools out there. Uh, they're really important, but equally important, if not more important, is the activity. So, but anyway, we'll look at some tools right now. So um, in terms of how kids write, you're going to be looking at the presentation of the text. Uh, since our students aren't going to be forming letters with their hand, they're going to be choosing from the things that we offer them. Like with Jake, he was not writing letters with his hands, right? He was choosing letters that were presented to him. So there's a couple different ways that we can look at how kids are presented with text. So we've, Caroline Musselwhite and myself have identified three categories of how text is presented to kids. Activity-specific vocabulary, word banks, and the alphabet. 
and we'll just take a quick look at each of them. So this is an example of closed set, a closed set writing activity. And very, very quickly, closed set writing activities are basically multiple choice writing activities where the student is presented um, like three or four choices of phrases or sentences about how they want to write something. So this, these um, pictures that you see here are screenshots from an activity where the student writes a Valentine's Day card. And the screen at the top left with the green buttons on it, that's how the activity starts. And the student chooses one of the ways that, that they want to start the Valentine's uh, writing activity. So they've got three choices like, hey, hi there, and howdy. And the student chooses one. And then it goes to the next screen, and it gives them choices of the next thing they want to say. And it continues on down the line. So this is an example of a closed writing activity where you have all the choices in there for the student, and they choose whatever they want and build, build the uh, card. Okay. You can also do writing activities with word banks, where you make just a bank of individual words that go with the activity. And there's lots of nice software out there that allows you to do that, allows you to author these things. Here are just a few commonly used examples. There's way more. And you can see in the picture, um, this is a word bank for uh, an activity where students are writing about giants, and they're trying to describe how they look. And so that word bank down there was created by, by Clicker, using Click software. Uh, you can also make word banks out of uh, paper-based flip systems. This is a light tech uh, way to give kids access to word banks. Uh, this, what you're looking at in the picture uh, are a couple pages, are actually about 13 pages of different um, symbols and words that kids can choose to write with. And so you'll see tabs down the right and left sides. Each one of these tabs is tagged to a different page. They're all different categories. So it's like there's a, a question tab on the right. And if you turn to that page, there's choices of questions that kids could pick from. There's a feelings page. Um, so if you're writing about a character's feelings, you could flip to the feelings page, and kids have choices of feeling words to choose from, etc. So that's an example of a paper-based word bank system. I uh, also want to put a plug in for AAC devices. Some AAC devices out there can also be used as a pencil. They can be plugged into the, to the computer, and anything that the student says on the uh, communication device will go directly into the computer. And so, for example, if you're writing an email and you have your email open and you have your cursor in the email, anything that the kid chooses on the device will go right into that email. And so, for most of the devices, kids have access to sentences, phrases, individual words, and the alphabet. So they could use any of those things to uh, generate a, a, write, a piece of writing. Lastly, the other ways kids can write is obviously using the full alphabet. Uh, so these are just some examples of keyboards. Uh, we got the IntelliKeys and the Big Keys. They are enlarged keyboards on the, up, the top pictures. And the lower left-hand corner is a labeler, and that's just from the office supply store. It's very small. Uh, it's very good for kids who have very limited range of motion. Uh, it's not for kids who have vision problems. Uh, but it's a nice, simple way to get text, uh, get a, a writing tool to create. It, you can, there's a little window in there where kids can see what they've chosen. There's a full keyboard on there, I might add. And there's also a little um, print button where kids can print out uh, a piece of tape, a label with their writing on it. The lower right-hand corner is just an example of, of a, a, a Braille, Braille typewriter that kids, use, kids can use. This is the Mountbatten Brailler. There's a lot more out there, but that's a really nice one. So those are just some examples of how kids can write. And just notice that a lot of these, uh, re these require kids to be able to use their hands some in somewhat. I mean, we have a lot of kids who have, aren't able to hold a pencil, obviously, right? And they can use these. Uh, but there's plenty of kids who can't even use this. And so here are some other things that they could be using. Now, some of the pictures are missing from this screen, um, but I'll tell you what they are. Uh, so these are just some alternative pencils that have been made uh, by the Center for Literacy and Disability Studies at the University of North Carolina. So you can go to their website and learn more about these pencils. They're all on a CD, and you can see uh, and read more about them on the website. And so these are all pencils for kids who can't really use their hands at all. Uh, and so up in the le le upper left-hand corner, uh, that's a color-coded eye gaze frame made out of PVC pipe and some letter cards. And kids just eye point to the letters that they want, and then the adult sitting across from them writes down. 
on the uh, far right-hand corner, there's not a picture there, but it says print alphabet flip chart. And that's simply uh, a paper-based uh, alternative pencil that presents the letters, the full alphabet in rows to students. And they choose, you know, it's used during partner-assisted scanning where the adult points to the letters. And when the adult is pointing to what the student wants, they let them know somehow, whether it's through a gesture, whether it's using a switch, uh, whether it's through a you know, facial expression. Uh, and so when they've selected something, then the adult writes it down for them. Uh, on the lower right-hand corner, the Braille alphabet flip chart, and that works pretty much the same way, only using what we call partner-assisted pointing, where the adult helps the student go through each Braille letter and choose one. The middle, um, the, the lower left-hand corner is just a sample overlay for the IntelliKeys. The IntelliKeys is a reprogrammable overlay. And so these just have really, really large buttons. And you can see, um, you can play with the font color here to um, support the kids' vision needs. The middle picture, which is not there, is an on-screen keyboard. And this was made with software. This is pretty much like what Jake, what Jake was using. It's a, you know, it's an on-screen keyboard that's on the computer, and kids use switches to scan through the keyboard and pick the letter they want. So those are just some examples of alternative pencils. Uh, here are just a couple thoughts about uh, ways for kids to write. When you're choosing a way for kids to write, you want to pick the alternative pencil that is as easy, easy as possible. Because you, you know, when we're having our kids try to write, and it's really hard, we want to find an easy way for them. So that way, during the writing activity, they can think about the writing part. We don't want them expending all this energy on the motor part. We want their brain power going to the writing task. So you want to pick a pencil that is as easy as possible. Don't let the motor get in the way. For some of our kids, nothing is easy for them, right? So in, in that case, you're going to want to pick a pencil that they have the most potential to learn how to use. The other, the other thing to remember is that when you're choosing an alternative pencil for kids to use, they don't need to know how they're let they don't need to know their letters. Right? When you think about it, when we give a two-year-old a crayon, they don't know their letters. But they're going to learn about them by writing with them. So it's going to be the same thing for our students. Uh, and remember, our kids are going to learn about how these pencils work by writing with them. And so you might be starting off with a student who's using the eye gaze frame. And you might be starting with them and they don't know what to do. But that's okay. Through lots of modeling and and in, you know, activities, they're going to learn how to use it. Uh, you know, I showed a couple different ways that kids can write using uh, closed activity-specific uh, writing, writing setups, word banks, uh, and the alphabet. Those are the three different ways. And it's really, really important for kids to have access to writing with the alphabet, always, always, always. Remember, again, they're scribbling, they're experimenting, especially if they're just getting started with writing. I alluded to it before, but you can have all these great pencils, all these alternative ways for kids to write, but you got to have a really, really good idea, activity. Uh, you, you know, it's got to be motivating for, this, motivating for the student. It has to be. Uh, so you want to give them loads of opportunities to write without standards, right? It's open-ended. There's no right or wrong answer. Anything goes. The writing is not corrected. Because think about it. Our students have had really limited opportunities to write. So it's not fair to have them start writing correctly right out of the gate. Think about how much time kids without disabilities get to figure out how writing works. Our kids are going to need the same opportunities, if not more. Uh, so, you know, open-ended activities like journal, writing journaling, journal entries, notes, letters, picture captions from things that they've done or things that they like, uh, making signs or artwork to put up, you know, in the classroom, uh, and making books. We do a lot of making books with kids. So there's just some examples, and there's tons more out there. Uh, so, you know, the one thing with writing is that it changes over time. If you're starting with a student who's scribbling, who's doing emergent writing, it starts out as scribble. And these are, these are Matthews. This is, these are uh, writing samples from Matthew. And he's the student that you saw before. He's got deaf blindness. Uh, and you could see in the very beginning, he's doing random scribble with a keyboard. He's using the uh, IntelliKeys keyboard, which you can see in the picture. And when he presses a button on the IntelliKeys, the letter goes up on the screen and it gets spoken using talking word software. So in the beginning, he's just going to town doing random scribbling, banging on that keyboard, having a good time. And you could see that 
the letters are just popping out there. It doesn't spell anything, but that's okay. That's how Scribble looks when you're starting with a keyboard. And you could see, you know, like, at, you know, not quite a year later, he's starting to do these word-like groups. And you saw that in the, in the previous slide, right? It doesn't spell anything, but that's okay. It's starting to look like something. It's starting to look like a sentence. He's getting the concept of a word, and that tells us a lot. Um, and then, you know, a year and a half later, uh, two years later, two years later, excuse me, he's doing some early sound spelling, which is fabulous. He's writing something about service dogs, and he really likes service dogs. He really wants one, so he's writing the word like there. And that's a big signal right there, big. He's telling us that he understands that there's a specific correlation, a relationship between L and the sound, what it looks like and what it sounds like. Which, and that's what he needs to do to write like. So this early sound spelling is a pretty big deal. Uh, and as you can see, he's moved along this pathway from an, being an emergent writer to an early conventional writer. Right? So he starts out with a random scribble. It starts to become more refined, looking like, looking like word-like groupings there. And then finally, starting to move to a place where we can read, read it. And here we've got some support to read it. We have the context. But um, he's moving along the path towards becoming an early conventional writer. And it certainly looks a lot different than the very beginning with the random scribble. If you want to learn more about Matthew, go to the Center for Literacy and Dis Disability Studies website. There's a whole case study of, of, uh, on Matthew there uh, with videos, writing samples, and uh, narratives about his progress over time. There's also one there of Jake. So just one last plug of uh, why it's important to start, start getting our kids to write. Writing is an active way of learning about Braille or print, right? They're sitting there trying to grapple with how to make this stuff and, you know, how to use these alternative pencils and what happens when you, you know, select a letter. Uh, so it's really that active physical engagement that our kids need. Writing supports learning to read. You think about it. What's the first thing you do when you write something? You stop and read it. And so when we're writing with our kids, we can teach them the same thing. So we're really supporting their reading skills. Writing is a source of an assessment data. And as you saw when we looked at their writing samples, we could tell a lot about what kids know about print. And that's really important since they can't read stuff to us. So writing is a really good way to look at what they know about um, literacy. And lastly, writing is communication. Kids are learning that they can express themselves and represent their ideas on paper. So I hope you've got a chance to see some of the ways uh, that our kids can write and some of the things that they might write. Uh, and with the right tools, our kids can totally do this. Yes, they can. Absolutely. Uh, so that's it for this webinar. Uh, I'd like you right now to take the time to uh, take the, um, the post-test here and answer some questions about some of the things that you've learned. Thank you very much.